Here we go. Welcome, John, my friend. Thank you very much for being here, brother. I'm uh, just going to quickly read your bio, and then uh, we'll do our one-on-one uh, -on -one talk. Great. Thank you. So, guys, uh, this is my buddy, John Mayberry. John is an electric philosopher with a learning to Rudolf Steiner's anthropo anthroposophy. His desire is to unify the diverse spiritual sciences. Uh, it is uh, pneumatology. My, his gift is the ability to kiss, keep it simple, stupid, and to boil it down with a lingo of the common persona. Thank you very much, John. My brother, thank you for being here. We uh, did a wonderful talk uh, just uh, a few days ago, I think like a week ago. And uh, we uh, learned a little bit about you at that uh, at that uh, talk that we had. So before we get into our talk, uh, you know, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and uh, what you're going to be talking about today. And then uh, I'll put myself on screen and uh, you and I will have a conversation. And guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them in the chat room. And I will be sure to uh, ask John the questions that uh, you have posted. So, uh, John, I'll give you the stage for a few minutes, brother. And, uh, you know, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're going to be talking about and your experiences. And then I'll hop in. Wonderful. Uh, the first word is eclectic, not electric. Eclectic, yes. <laughs> electric works too. I, I have uh, some degrees in electronics. Uh, I'm just a guy searching for the truth. i uh, been through religion, been through atheism, uh, been up and down a lot of rabbit holes. And I think I've come upon what, for me at least, I have found to be some truth. Um, through that, uh, I have happened on to uh, Rudolf Steiner, which uh, really helped push me over the edge in a lot of areas, uh, helped solidify a lot of what I had already learned in the last 15 years um, and just make everything more real. I think we were going to discuss uh, my second NDE and my understanding of Christ consciousness uh, today. Let me, uh, there I am. Sorry, John, I was uh, a little bit lost there. So, brother, uh, you've had uh, a number of uh, near-death experiences. And uh, we spoke about uh, one experience there uh, last week. And then uh, you said you were going to share your uh, second experience that you had with us in this conference. So uh, please go ahead. I'm going to make some notes and uh, and then I'll uh, question you as we uh, as we move along. Wonderful. Um, a couple of years after my first experience, um, I was still pretty much into drugs and alcohol and partying. And the first experience didn't make the kind of impact that a lot uh, of other people who have NDs uh, have. The second experience, uh, I, a couple of years later, I was still pretty much going nowhere and life was starting to take its toll. I had uh, some catastrophes, some family catastrophes and mother was in the hospital and just life in general was, you know, taking its toll on, on us like it does. And I decided to end it all. That was uh, a decision that I, I came to and I thought, you know what, this is it. I'm, I'm not fighting this anymore. This is just too much. Um, so I took uh, a bunch of pills and some alcohol and went to sleep for, oh, I, you know, I don't even really remember the event, actually. Uh, the, the, the NDE part of it didn't come. Uh, well, I should say the, the remembrance of the N NDE didn't come until only a few years ago. Uh, I had very little uh, recollection of being uh, away from the, the, the real world, uh, you, you could say. Um, I, I woke up uh, after, I'm not sure how many hours had gone by or, or days had gone by uh, in, in a you know, flea bag motel. And uh, I called my mom and said, Mom, I tried to commit suicide. And she's like, Oh, boy, okay, so you know, we'll go ahead and 
let's see if we can work things out. <clears throat> and that pretty much started me down the, the path of trying to get my life straightened up. Uh, it was uh, quite a quite an event. Um, got me into some counseling, and they uh, they put me on lithium. Back then, that was a real popular thing to try to level you out. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. I had <clears throat> I had met some uh, some Christian folks back then, and um, you know they of course were talking religion and stuff to me, and I wasn't religious at the time. I really did, wasn't brought up religious and didn't have a great understanding of religions. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that started to, to, to trigger something in me. And maybe a few months later, I actually had my first encounter with what you might call Christ consciousness or universal consciousness or you know, whatever name you want to give it. Um, some kind of a, a feeling of power had come over me and it just you know, was moving me in a particular direction. They basically had told me I would have to survive the rest of my life on lithium. And I just didn't, it didn't make any sense to me. Uh, so I, I continued to take it and, and I got hooked, pretty much hooked on it. I uh, became dependent on the lithium. Uh, the few times I'd ran short of any lithium, I pan went into a panic attacks and, you know, it just wasn't, wasn't really a fun thing. I deep in depression. Um, so yeah, after a month or so, these Christians had invited me to a New Year's Eve party that they were having or gathering or whatever that they were having in 1983, 84, New Year's Eve. And I decided, oh, you know what, I got nothing else to do. I was in a little flea bag motel. We used to nickname Roach Motel. Kind of, you know, nowhere else to be, nowhere else to go. I was like, well, I, anything to get out of here, sure. So I went with them. And that night, I got into religion. I accepted the Lord, got into religion. Uh, something I really needed to hang on, something you know, to grab onto, to grasp onto. Shortly after that, I come to realize, why am I fighting trying to get off of drugs to get back onto drugs? Mm -hmm. And I quit the lithium, cold turkey. Uh, it was a little transition, but it wasn't too hard once I made the decision that you know I'm not going to go start another drug habit you know, getting off one drug habit, starting another drug habit. Um, and then pretty much for the next 10, 15 years, uh, I got into religion, got into the church, uh, changed my life considerably, turned everything around. I, I, I give up my old friends, old party buddies. I realized that uh, there's something in the religion that says that you uh, repent, which basically means you turn around 180 degrees and start going the other direction. And I, I gave up then uh, all my friends, all my old acquaintances, moved away from where I was living, you know, 10, 15 miles away, still in Phoenix, uh, but 10, 15 miles away and started, basically started a new life. Um, after about a year, I really felt called to enter the ministry. So I joined a Bible college, did the first two years in one year. And then went for the third year and was told I had to go get uh, at least a high school equivalent or GED. Being a high school dropout, of course, I didn't have either. So I went in, I started studying, and my mom said, well, just go in and test and see how far you go and study on what you need to, to study on. So I went as far as the ninth grade in high school. Never went any further. Went right to work after that. <clears throat> I went in and tested, and I actually passed by the skin of my teeth, but Me I actually too. passed and then went ahead and took my third year of Bible college. After uh, about 10 years, I moved away from Phoenix and moved to another location. And I got to a point where I started questioning my beliefs. Uh, there was too many things that I, I, I struggled with. Uh, Greg, I like Greg uh, Bornstein, one of your guests has mm -hmm. a saying about open loops. Yeah, I had too many open loops. So I started uh, really searching for what I believed and why I believed it. And I found that a lot of what I believed really didn't have a lot of foundation. Uh, the more and more I studied, the more and more I researched, the more and more I realized that the Bible is not a history book. Uh, it's basically a story. 
Uh, there's a lot of mythology in there. There is a lot of truth in there. Uh, I've come to learn later on that mythology needs a little bit of history and truth in order to hold that mythology alive and keep it alive through the years. So I didn't totally give up religion at that point, but I did at a certain point realize that most everything I believed was wrong. Uh, I got into some other things in broadening my education. Um, there's a, a book by uh, a Lloyd Pye that said, uh, he, he's, it basically is called Everything You Think You Know Is Wrong, <laughs> which is a, a heck of an eye-opening uh, book when you start thinking that everything that I learned in school, and not, every, well, not everything, but most everything that you, you learned in school, you're indoctrinated into when it comes to history and, and certain information like that, is half truths some of it's no truths and you know so that's that's kind of a, a a tough transition to make but that helped me you know down the path uh, i went for a while pretty hardcore into atheism uh, which again was a, a a good way to to change my views <clears throat> i think that um <clears throat> really like that roach motel I was uh, a little bit muted there, and I wanted to yell out. I think that's a universal hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, I think I every, just, every town has one. Yeah, I, I've come across a few. And uh, back in uh, the next province that I used to live in, Alberta, in uh, Edmonton, I think we had a few of those that uh, we used to actually call the Cockroach Motel and some really, really seedy places, man. A lot of, <laughs> lot of, lot of seedy shits going on there. <laughs> yeah. This one was downtown Phoenix. Uh, most of the bookers and drug ad dealers and addicts that's kind of where they hung out at and yeah the only place i could afford at the time yeah i hear <laughs> you that's about the same uh type of ecosystem that these other hotels were in uh in in edmonton you had mentioned about uh, ged and uh you know not passing high school and uh you know i think that is a uh, a tremendous achievement right, uh, of not passing high school. <laughs> yes. you know, I, I have to say that because we're caught in this program of, uh, you know, repeat and then you'll pass. You've been programmed and you've been brainwashed now to go and do what you need to do. So I think it's, a, it's quite the accomplishment that uh, you didn't have to go through that sausage factory and that allowed you to mold yourself and your mind in the way that you wanted it to, not in the way that society wanted you to so i really really resonated with that yeah it was uh I, I i was one that always bucked the system i was you could pretty much say i was the black sheep in the family and getting in trouble and always kind of blazing my own trail uh, I, i'm so thankful now that i didn't have to endure all that indoctrination uh just for the simple fact that my ability to learn and and absorb information that I've gotten in the last, let's say, 15 years uh, has been so much greater for me, the ability to do that without having to overcome. I already had to overcome so much indoctrination as it was, uh, especially the religious indoctrination that I'd gotten into, um, uh, that, that not having that education hanging over me is, is a good and bad thing. I have, you know, people that kind of make fun of me sometimes because I'm not a linguist. I, I don't know a lot of, you know, specifics and stuff. So, you know, I'm, I'm in the dictionary a lot. I look up words and, you know, that's, that's refreshing for me because I'm learning that uh, language uh, is a blessing and a curse. Uh, Rudolf Steiner has a talk about the genius of language and he discusses how it's a prison. Uh, language is and can be a prison because we do our darndest to, uh, voice uh, something that we've experienced outside of the, the, the material realm. It's very hard to put words uh, to a spiritual uh, you know, event that you've, you've, that's happened to you. Just like the NDE, you know, we'll touch on it maybe a little bit later, is, is in the last few years, I've actually started to gain some memories of that second MD, NDE. And it's uh, been quite profound for me now actually remembering some of that. You know, I got my GED in prison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's really a true true story. 
Um, you know, I went through uh, a pretty tough upbringing. And uh, by the time I was uh, let go from the government system of foster homes and group homes, I, uh, you know, did some CD shit myself. That's why I'm aware of, you know, the cockroach motels and, uh, yeah. you know, and ended up in prison for uh, a number of years. And it was in there that, uh, you know, I thought I would get my GED because I thought I was accomplishing something. And uh, it's only now that I come to realize that uh, I really didn't accomplish anything. But only thing I did was just feed my ego. And uh, but that was the time where I turned my life around. That's when I was, you know, probably in my lowest place. Uh, that I've ever been to. And then once I got out of that, I just totally left the province and uh, left the city, came to a brand new city where I didn't know anybody and uh, and just began fresh, right? I wanted my mind yeah. to be fresh and brand new and I didn't want to be exposed to anyone. And then that led me into, you know, I became like a hermit and I started to distance myself from people. And, you know, so that took a, a little while to come out of that shell to, um, you know, to be where I am uh, today. So let me ask you, John, uh, you know, like your journey that you've had, you know, up until your second NDE, right? Now, how does that, you know, connect with your Christ consciousness? Like, how did you realize that? And how did you come to a connection with it? Uh, it was about two years between the first and second. Um, I think basically what it was, was coming to the realization that, that, you know, I was in charge of my life and I wasn't doing a very good job. And before I even really, uh, uh, got, I actually it was before I got into the church or anything. Um, I just, I was depressed and, 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 you know, again, you know, trying to get things figure out, you know, what was here next for me after, you know, trying to commit suicide. Um, and then just, the, I guess the best way I can describe it is a, a feeling, a, uh, a feeling of peace just came over me. Uh, I had a little bit of Sunday school when I was a child. It was basically, you know, get the kids out of the house, send them off to Sunday school. Uh, my dad raised six kids on his own for wow. most of my life. You know, we came from a broken family. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it was a way for him to have a little bit of peace and quiet having uh, six kids. Um, so that that energy that 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 force that I felt at the time I didn't really fully understand what it was, but the only religious understanding I had at that point in my life was Christianity, and I, I acknowledged it as uh, Christ communicating, I guess, with me. And then when I got into the church, you know, a few months later, uh, it was really easy to tie that event into. Christ, you know, what the Bible talks about, you know, Christ and, 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 and you know, the, the teachings and stuff that he had fit. Uh, it sent me uh, thinking differently, differently about uh, events and stuff that had occurred. Um, so that was probably the, the, the feeling of it was there, but I didn't understand it. I really didn't understand it until probably 15 years later. Mm hmm. <clears throat> So is that like uh, recently you've uh, come to understand this, uh, you know, whatever we want to label it, cosmic consciousness, Christ consciousness, or have you, or has it been with you for a while now where you've become adapted to it and begun to understand it at a, at a much deeper level? Or are you still on the journey of, you know, understanding this Christ consciousness or cosmic consciousness, this feeling of peace and love within you? Yeah, I don't think we ever, I don't think we ever leave the journey. Uh, I think we're always on the journey. But yeah, I would have to say that um, the the peace that the religion had brought me was certainly there. Uh, when I started questioning my beliefs and, and finding a lot of uh, controversy in the Bible, uh, I started got to a point where I was willing and, and, and ready to put away the God idea. Um, so that's another time in my life where, you know, they say sometimes you have to kill off the old self. Well, that was a killing off that I had to go through. Uh, so I, I literally went through the, the stage atheism quite hard and I, I killed God. I killed God in my own mind. I killed God out in the world. And I said, you know, this is all just a bunch of 
you know, malarkey, you know, mythology. It's just a bunch of stories. It doesn't mean anything. And then I got to a point <clears throat> where I couldn't, I couldn't throw away going down atheism. You know, they're very strict. I found them to be as <laughs> dogmatic and, and fundamental as a lot of the Christianity I've gotten into. And I couldn't throw away these two experiences, these, these two NDEs that I had. I couldn't throw those away. Was it all in my head? I had to say, yeah, sure, it's a possibility. It's all in my head. But that got me into searching uh, deeper and thinking, well, there's something. A, a book can't survive for 2,000 years and have nothing valuable in it. There has to be something there. So in my search, as I started searching uh, for, for, for understanding of, of this, you know, 66 books that are in the typical Christian Bible, uh, it got me to open, you know, many, many doors of research for me. Uh, one of the things I started coming to realize was there's a lot of mythology there. I never had the opportunity to study, you know, being not going through the, the school systems, you know, Greek mythology. And, and you know, I, I was always into history, but never really deep. And once I started learning more about uh, the stories in there and how the stories are more ancient than we're led to believe, uh, it was really uh, eye opening for me. Um, and then I just came to a point in my life where I said, you know, I got to I got to know, I got to find out. And I said, it's time, you know, I basically, you know, cried out to whatever my understanding of God was and said, look, God, you and I got to sit down and have a powwow. This, I mean, I, this isn't working for me. You, you've got to come down and talk to me. If, 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 if I can't feel the nail prints, you know, I was a typical Dodging Thomas. If mm -hmm. I can't feel the nail prints in your hands and, and stuff, I mean, why is it okay for some and not okay for me? And, that was uh, probably the a very beginning. I, 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 that Christ consciousness or universal consciousness or cosmic consciousness, whatever name you want to give to it, it spoke. It spoke back and opened some doors. What did it say? It basically said, I'm real. <clears throat> it said there's something more than, than, than what you see and feel around you. Your, your material five cents uh, understanding is is wonderful for for this realm that we're in but there is more to you know the world than what you see and feel and touch with those senses like you're connected to this body but you're much more than this body yeah absolutely no doubt um the feeling that you know the the, the words you know that go around now we are you know this is an avatar you know this is a you know that 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 feeling started becoming more and more real when I started realizing that that and learning you know more about the esoteric uh, beliefs and and getting into other things like alchemy and uh, sacred geometry and you know pretty much just about anywhere you you can dive down a rabbit hole I dive down uh, that we are in in touch with another realm that we've just lost the sensitivity to that other realm. Mm -hmm. Now, John, so uh, my, no, sorry, go ahead. go ahead. No, that's okay. Go ahead. I thought uh, you were done. I just jumped in uh, too quick. Um, please uh, share with us your uh, second NDE experience. Uh, you know, what happened, what led up to that experience. And then while you were in that moment, uh, you know, like, how was it? Because I remember the last time when we spoke, uh, you were saying that, um, here, let me bring my cell phone. You were saying that, uh, you know, you were on a river and going towards, like, you know, a vortex. And it felt like forever when it was, you know, really maybe just a few seconds or right. maybe a minute or so, right? So, you know, having that in mind, um, you know, maybe refresh our memory for people that didn't hear that before on the other platforms that you were watching really quickly, um, you know, that particular experience on the river and then how your second NDE happened and if it was the same or, or what? Sure. It was actually considerably different. Uh, the first time I was, uh, I used to go down the river tubing all the time. I live in Phoenix and, uh, there was a place in the river where the river got pretty swift and fast and i thought it would be exciting to go through there without my tube 
So I did. And uh, uh, the first time I went through, I fought to stay above water. It pulled me back into that whirlpool, it drew, drew me under the water. I had no energy, no breath. I uh, hadn't taken a breath. And basically, uh, I thought, you know what, this is it. This was uh, my, my time. And I got a life review uh, after I finally decided, you know, that this was it mm -hmm. uh, and gave up. Uh, I had a life review in reverse, uh, which some people, you know, get it in reverse. Some people get it forward. It just it's kind of odd. Anyway, uh, I, I went went back from the, that moment, about 21 years old, until I my vision was uh, in the corner of a hospital room looking down on a baby being born. And at that moment, I popped out of the water, and there was a tuber there. And I grabbed onto that tumor, and and I said, "Oh, thank God you were there!" Whew. And pretty much uh, that was that experience uh, boiled down quite a bit. The second experience um, didn't was nothing like the first one. Uh, I like I say, I don't remember really anything about the second experience until a couple of years ago. Uh, after all the researching and studying and esoteric stuff that I'd gotten into and realizing the Bible was considerably more than, than just a exoteric book, I got into some Rudolf Steiner stuff and I started uh, listening to his audiobook, How to Know Higher Worlds and its attainment. It's attainment. And everything just clicked. In one moment in time, everything just clicked for me. And you could say I stepped across that veil for just a moment. Um, and then I started l researching a lot more of the Rudolf Steiner and, and other stuff and, and realized that we here can cross that veil. Uh, there are things that we can know that is outside of the realm of what we call reality. And in the last couple of years, um, on one of my meditations, I was shown my started to be shown that NDE that I had that I didn't remember um, because well, we'll go through that. Why? Because so the, the, the memory that has come to me is, of course, seeing the white light. Um, I'll have to paraphrase as best I can. We'll, 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 you know, do the best we can to paraphrase. Yeah. What's, what's uh, the experience, but so, you know, the, the, I saw the light, uh, a being, an entity came up and greeted me and basically said, what are you doing here? And I said, I just can't do it any longer. You know, this world is just taking its toll. And he's like, okay, well, come on in. And he goes, uh, uh, let me show you. Let me see. He goes, he goes okay, well, well, come on in. He goes, uh, let's brought, brought me into a place. And he goes, let's go ahead and take you to this room and, Let's go ahead and, and do a life review. So this time I had an opportunity to see my life from birth until the moment uh, that I had taken all those drugs. And, uh, you know, that, again, time, like we discussed in the first one, time is, it's not like time here. Uh, it, it could have been seconds. It could have been days. That this mm -hmm. you know occurred uh, because you just don't have a concept of time when you're when you're in that realm. Um, so we come out of that room, and the entity greets me, and he goes, "You know, you don't have to go back, but you can if you mm -hmm. if you want to." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, I, I don't think so." Um, <laughs> so we're walking along, and he brings me to another room, and he opens up the door. He says, "Well, before you make the decision, you know, go into this room over here." So I go into this room over here and they basically put on the, the movie, the show for me. <laughs> and it's my life from the time I committed suicide further on. Oh, how interesting. And it's still quite emotional right now, even thinking about it. But I saw my life basically today. I saw my, my kids, my grandkids, everything uh, that I could have. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I come out of the room. I'm like, oh, wow, wow, that's, <laughs> this is kind of interesting. And uh, he asked me again, did you want to go back? And I'm like, well, 
hello yeah of course i'm going back mm -hmm. and uh he's so he takes him by the shoulder and starts walking me back towards the light and um we get close to the 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 veil let's say the entry point and he goes oh by the way i, I forgot i forgot to tell you one thing he goes when you go through that door you're gonna forget everything that's the veil that we pass through when we initially come here it's a veil forget of forgetfulness and at that point it's like yeah, I'm, I'm coming back i mean are you kidding me it's like <laughs> well you know you tell me this now but you know are you kidding me i mean i got to see my life and you know in the future mm -hmm. well, that's not going to stop me now from coming back so pretty much uh so far to date that would be the the memory i have of that event was passing through losing all my memory and now here I am. What, what do you think uh, the significance was to play your life from the moment that you attempted suicide? Like, what do you think it was trying to tell you? You know, I've I've actually thought about that quite a bit, and like I said earlier, I think that this journey that we're on is there's not a destination to this journey. The journey is all about the journey. Mm -hmm. And I think that the opportunity, I, I think whatever I did, uh, the drugs I took, the alcohol I took, whatever I did was probably not so damaging to my body that I didn't have the opportunity to come back into my body. Uh, so they gave me that opportunity, you know, like in, in, a, in a car accident, you might be so badly mangled that you wouldn't want to go back, nor really could you go back. Mm -hmm. uh, there was enough evidently left of me there that uh, they said, well, you know, you, you've got an opportunity to, you've got a second chance, basically, I, I guess is, is kind of how I see it now. It's like, is this really the choice you want to make? I mean, is this really the, the journey you want, how you want to end this particular journey that you're on? Um, so I think that, and, and now later on, as I learned more now, there is something to karma. And I think that uh, having that, that maybe that negative karma still hanging over, uh, I, I think that that opportunity to maybe have a second chance is, is a gift. <clears throat> Not too many people get a uh, second chance in, uh, in life. And it's uh, amazing that you did have the opportunity to have this second chance. How has your life been since that point of being since, given this this second opportunity to um, you know to to have that human experience of what you came here to do originally? Well, I think that um, I kind of call Earth you know, earth school. I think a lot of us kind of feel sometimes that that really is, is what we're here for is to learn. And after that NDE, of course, not having any memory of what I have now, it got me into religion. It got me down to another frame of mind and allowed me to have doors open up for me that I may not have opened up ever, um, you know, before. So I think that, uh, that the event, was a turning point a major turning point certainly in my life uh just because it 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 it, it was more than you know the, the biblical story of being born again it really was mm -hmm. being born again mm -hmm. uh, did i make some of the same stupid mistakes afterwards yeah of course i did you're here you know, we're here learning but then i started you know really questioning and looking at you know my actions and my reactions and you know it, it took a while for me to to start coming to terms of things but after a few years uh, being in in the religious uh, realm uh, being around religious people and people who want to do things better than you know than maybe they they, they you know had before or whatever mm -hmm. got me on a path of, of trying to do better uh, and then realizing that I am more than just my body and I am more than just 
what occurred in my past and, and all that stuff that happened before was just stuff that happened. Mm -hmm. it's, it's nothing that, that you can, you know, everybody makes mistakes and there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, there's probably nobody out there that has done anything worse than anybody else. You know, when it comes down to, well, I shouldn't say that, but <clears throat> everybody is capable of doing the most horrible things that has ever been done on this planet. Mm -hmm. Coming to that realization, it, it just for me was like, I would rather be better than that. I, I don't want to be that person anymore that I used to be that just didn't care about other people and never gave thought to my actions and, and, and you know, the, the path I was on. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great moment to uh, ask this question from uh, Eddie Jr., uh, he asks, uh, when you have weak moments, what helps you to put things in a better perspective? Uh, I, I would say anymore. The, 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 I've gone to the point now where I, I really don't have those moments anymore. But earlier on when I had, you know, those, let's say, darkness or weak moments or whatever you want to call them, I'm not sure exactly what his question is, but uh, I – would basically acknowledge if, if a darkness or a weakness or, or maybe an improper thought would come along, I would, I would acknowledge it immediately and realize that it didn't necessarily come from me. Uh, it may have come from elsewhere. You know, I, I love the cartoons in the, in the olden days where you had the little devil on one shoulder and the little angel on the other shoulder. And, you know, the more and more I realize uh, about the spirit realm, that's not that far off. <clears throat> So acknowledging it, I think acknowledging it for what it is and then dealing with it exactly at that moment and not letting it fester, I think is mm -hmm. the very best advice anybody could ever have. If, if you have darkness or anything come upon you, acknowledge it. It's there. It's something. It, it is a thing. And say, decide right then and there. Do you want this in your life? Do you want this in your head? Or you don't. Mm-hmm. It has its own energy, right? The uh, oh, yes. darkness, uh, you know, it's like a form of consciousness in itself. Oh, that, yes. Uh, trying to express itself, but because it's a lower emotion, you know, we tend to stay away from it, not acknowledge it. And then when we don't acknowledge it, we're creating more self-damage than, uh, than we're doing self-help. Yeah, I think ignoring it is the worst thing you can do, just like anything, if you... If you cut yourself uh, and you just ignore it and you go out and you continue working, uh, you're going to get infected and you're going to have issues. And, you know, if you take care of it immediately and, and do something, cover it up or rinse it off or whatever and deal with it right at that moment, it's not going to be a big thing later on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, earlier, John, you were mentioning when you had communication um I want to understand that like a little bit better, right? Because when when we hear that, you know, and our own programming with our own own mind tells us that when God is speaking or consciousness is speaking or when source is speaking, it's speaking just like us, like we do here in this realm. Now, when you were being spoken with, was it like a, like a language that we're speaking right now or was it more like an energetic language that was coming in and you were understanding it and, you know, and interpreting it in English or was it like, you know, I, I want to understand that a little bit more because I find that extremely fascinating because I, I go back to, you know, before I go into this, I, I go back to the uh, Tower of Babel earlier on when you were speaking about language. Mm -hmm. and when language was corrupted, you know, I wonder if, you know, that one common language that we had was the language of energy and the language of thought. And when the Tower of Babel, you know, was struck down, you know, more so metaphorically, we went on to speak the regional dialects that we normally spoke and our original language is that language of thought. So I wonder if the same thing was happening when you were having the conversation with Source yeah, uh, I would say that in in some of the time, the communication comes purely intuitively. Uh, it is just a thought will come into your head 
and it will move you in a, dir a particular direction. Um, and then the, the vocal communication, it is, my understanding is it is your higher self. It speaks to you in the language that you understand. It can also lead you, though, down where it wants to lead you. Mm -hmm. So it is a language. Uh, it is a language. Whatever language you speak, your higher self speaks. Mm -hmm. I, I had an incident a while back, and I had to question this. I, I, I got into the audio field and, and I learned a tremendous a lot, uh, amount about uh, audio and, and things, you know, getting into, I, I started a car stereo business uh, years ago. And so I'm driving along uh, here recently, about a year, year and a half ago. And I'm talking with myself, like sometimes we do when we're in our cars or somebody was talking to me, maybe it was myself, maybe it wasn't. And I, the thought came to me, it's like, can you hear yourself in your head? And that, because I was asked that question, or I asked myself that question, and I thought about it for a minute, and I thought, you know, I can actually hear my inflections, I can hear my voice, I can actually literally hear it in my head, uh, not just thoughts. You know, I, I could hear the 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 words. Let's say uh, in John, it says the word became flesh. I could hear those words like if somebody was talking to me sitting in the seat next to me and it was me. <clears throat> hmm, cool. How interesting. So do you think there was like your higher self in maybe other dimensions that was speaking to you instead of source and your higher self is saying, Hey John, you went there to earth to, you know, do certain things and you know, you got to go back right or whether if it was like source source you know what i'm saying like look at it yeah mind <laughs> yeah no, I, I know exactly what you're saying i think uh source speaks to us through our higher self most of the time mm -hmm. uh it absolutely was my higher self i have no doubt of that learning what i've learned now um we have more than just this one body we have an etheric body we have a an astral body we have you know the, our ego our i we have spiritual bodies uh, we have bodies that aren't here uh right now with us mm -hmm. uh, that would be called your higher self that is in communication with source all the time uh, you could call yeah, it like, an angel uh you know it, it doesn't matter what name you call it i mm -hmm. like to use just the abbreviation the hs uh if I'm talking to Christians, that's the Holy Spirit. If I'm talking to somebody else, it's your higher self. It doesn't matter what name you give it, but I think we are connected to source regardless um, of what name you give it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, to I totally agree. Um, I think we're just trying to interpret it while we're in this, in this form so that we can try to make sense of it, right, and, and to try to understand it while we're here because in our natural form of course we will understand right but while we're here because of the memory wipe you know i think we're trying to understand you know what i'm saying yeah i think uh, uh that is why the level of communication that we have with source is also dependent upon the amount of information that you've taken in in however many years of life that you've had because mm -hmm. it has to use what you have here on earth in your in your physical brain you know what what's up here it has to work with uh it, it so it will make it it has a way of making connections uh most of the communications i've got were just thoughts that appeared sometimes out of nowhere uh and it's like well, where, what, what is that why is that and then it, it then it moves me down a particular path maybe something was said or maybe a remembrance of a movie I watched or or a Bible scripture or something and uh, enlightenment will come through that and I'm like oh you know what that may might mean something else and then I'll do some research I may spend a half an hour I may spend 10 minutes I may spend two hours or two days researching this and it it, it opens uh, many many doors 
you know, and, and thank goodness we have Google nowadays. I mean, gosh, <laughs> what a blessing. It could be a blessing and a curse, but for me, it's been pretty much a, a good blessing because it's allowed me to, to do a tremendous amount of study in the short mm -hmm. little time that I've, I've been here studying. Yeah, I like, uh, I like Google myself, <clears throat> you know, and John, like all things, we can use it for positive or we can use it for negative, right? It's really, yeah. it's up to the individual and where your mindset is at. You know, you can use Google to search porn or you can use Google to educate yourself and raise your awareness, right? It's really just up to yeah. the person. Yeah, it certainly is. I think my understanding of the, the Genesis story is, it's a story of us awakening in this material world uh, of all religions, really, you know, we're here, we're in a realm where we don't fully understand it's different from where we came. And now what, now what do we do? Uh, there's some really great teachers out there that teach natural law, but we're not under natural law. We are a thinking creature to a point. Yes, we're under natural law. Try to defy gravity. But certain things, we're not under natural law anymore. We think, we can comprehend, we can, we can empathize with our fellow beings. Uh, you know, like the lion that kills the children of the, of the other lioness, you know, we don't have to do that. You know, Mother Nature says, that's okay. Uh, but it's not okay for us because we, we, we have a higher thought. We can think, we can empathize uh, with our fellow creatures. So... Even though we're subject to natural law, we're not under natural law. Oops, I'm bad for that, eh, John? Just mute myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, really, really bad for that. Um, here's a, a good question that just uh, popped up from, uh, from Eddie. He says, um, how about prophecy, the book of Daniel and Revelations particular, concerning the beast, the false prophet, and the Antichrist, do you feel they are manifest in this reality? Yeah, I think, uh, unfortunately, the, the Bible has some very good wisdom in there. Uh, I, I believe the beast is within all of us. Uh, it's a manifestation of everybody, everybody's consciousness. Um, I think that a, a lot of that, those prophecies are being used as a script, you might say, uh, mm -hmm. by the powers that be, whoever those powers they are. We're not going to define that who they are, because I think there's more than just they there. There is a spiritual battle going on. There's no doubt uh, anybody who's spiritual at all realizes that there's more going on than meets the, the eye. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's being manifested from ourselves. Um, it's also the polarity too, right? It's the polarity of light and darkness within us, right? That's the gift that we have to explore while we're here of love and hate, right? You can't experience love if you haven't hated and you can't experience hate if you haven't loved, right? So it's really the polarity and then our own polarity is the shadows that we see our collective shadow of you know division and anger and things like that envy uh that uh, really destroy our uh you know state of mind and our mindset yeah you could say it's it's two sides of the same coin um mm -hmm. once you realize that without dark you don't have light without hot you don't have cold uh and you realize that that unity and separateness are the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, once you come to that realization that you are not separated from whatever you call unity, whatever you call universal consciousness, oneness, whatever that God is that you've given a name to, you're never separated from that. Mm -hmm. I think coming to that realization for me is was the biggest step forward uh, for me, realizing that without pain you don't have pleasure with you know the idea is balance and balance is not stillness mm -hmm. but i've come to realize if you think balance as the tightrope walker uh it's a very very uh uh 
fine uh, thing, you know, to balance the left and the right. You know, it's it's not it's in, in, in you know like Star Wars. You know, the dark side or the light side. It's, it's it's a matter of balance. You know, what's the movie teach? It's not teaching anything but balance. You know, how do we balance uh, ourselves in this world here? So. Making the right choices, the, the knowledge of good and evil is wonderful, but doing good or evil, I think, is where, is what we need to learn. You know, knowing good and evil is easy. Choosing good over evil or evil over good is what we're learning. Yeah, you know, I want to, I like that, and, and I, I want to explore this uh, one last thing before we uh, run out of time. Um we hear lots of people that have had like near death experiences and afterwards <clears throat> they've had uh, like abilities or gifts that uh, that they suddenly have have you experienced anything like that uh, within your own life after experiencing the nde like you know what i mean like when some people come back there you know can suddenly play music or you know they see the world in numbers and things like that uh you know, has something similar happened to you? No, actually, I think that uh, the 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 plan that was, if you if you if there is a plan mm -hmm. that uh, my life was was planned out for, uh, I had so much of that available to me already. I was certainly not a stupid child. I was did stupid things, but I, I mm -hmm. was very you know intelligent and had the the mind to be able to grasp things. So yeah, nothing really. Uh, I think just the the ability and willingness to give up what I thought was truth hmm. was probably the gift that these experiences had given me, realizing hmm. that there is more to what we see, feel, and touch allowed me the opportunity to say, there's a couple of games I play. I, I like the what if game uh, and the why not game. There's two games I play with myself. So what if uh, my younger brother would throw out this uh, every so often and say, well, if I was God, would I do it this way? Well, that's kind of an interesting little uh, journey to go down <laughs> and, yeah. to God and say, well, gee, would I do it this way or would I do it some way other differently? And once you start to take on that, different point of view um it is uh it's an amazing place to be and then the why not game you know i've asked myself this you know it's been almost 40 years since my first well it was it's a little over 40 years since my first nde and i'm thinking why 40 years why 40 years have it did it take me to come to this point where i've come to this realization and the spirit had reminded me, well, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. Uh, you know, the, the Israelites were in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, you know, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. You know, hey, maybe there's something about 40 <laughs> that it took for me. I had to be in the world uh, experiencing for 40 years before, you know, the spirit was willing to come upon me, before I was readied for this uh, enlightenment that I, I feel that I'm, I've gotten. I love that. <clears throat> I love that. Never, uh, never really thought about it in, uh, in that manner. What a, what a beautiful uh, way to uh, look at it, John. That's, uh, that's amazing, brother. I never really thought about it that way. Cause it kind of seems like I was either really close to 40 when I began to wake up again, or it was just like kind of after 40, when you know when i began this journey again so very very interesting to look at it from that from that light yeah and then for me too 40s uh i started looking at 40s and you know there's a lot of interesting 40s you can last about 40 days without food mm -hmm. you can last about four days without water uh, you can last about four minutes without air you know there's there's something to numbers can mean something or they can't mean something it just depends on what it means to you mm -hmm. and for me i think the ability to find meaning for me in something may not mean anything to anybody else 
Um, I've got reams of notes I've been taking, and, and sometimes I read those notes, and they don't mean anything to me at the, that time. It's like, what was I thinking when I wrote this? I, I, I couldn't imagine what somebody else reading my notes would look at and go, my goodness, where in the heck are you been? <laughs> what have you been taking? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, for me, I'm finding that um, the esoteric uh, knowledge, the esoteric wisdom that I'm gaining, the Christ consciousness is just a Christ is an archetype. It's all it is. Christ, Christos, uh, Sophia Christos is wisdom. It is it is more than a, a being or a story. It's something that happens within our body. Raising the Christ or crucifying the Christ goes way farther than a story in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, there is something that happens scientifically, medically proven in our own bodies that occur. And when you accomplish and practice these certain techniques, you can actually raise that holy oil up in your body and do things in your body that uh, we, we won't really go there right now at this point in time, but it's more than just something in your head. Yeah. yeah. Are you familiar with uh, Michael Feely? Yes. I matter of fact, uh, I've watched a few of his things recently on your show. Mm -hmm. He's well, an amazing well, guy. He talks about what you were just saying. And, uh, yeah. you know, he's saying that the Bible is more, you know, a metaphoric story. And the characters within it are talking about, you know, your own self and your own consciousness and your own awareness and Kundalini. And what an amazing yeah. way to look at it. I have his books right here. And, man, I think I've studied them and read them over and over again. And, and still, <laughs> it's just beyond my reach for the time being to uh, to fully fully grasp what he's uh, what he's talking about, right? Because that's very high level information, and you seem to be very aware of that. And you know, I'm very happy to see that and hear that, and and that you shared that with me now twice. So uh, thank you. Yeah, after uh, after about ten years of study, uh, everything that basically mostly everything that michael discusses uh, has become real to me uh, mm -hmm. i've read a lot of books there's actually a really good book if somebody's interested by this lady here um that uh will really take you a lot of areas it really explains our our human body our, our, our the physical body that we have is a is an amazing machine you could say it's 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 more than a machine it's it's just amazing uh what the human body the capability of the human body has who's the author of that uh book john that was uh kelly marie kerr kelly marie kerr and she has another book also uh called elevation is revelation which is very enlightening it it takes a lot of the information and makes it extremely palatable mm -hmm. uh, again getting her book i had gone through everything already getting her book i was already on board with pretty much everything she has in this book and you look at my notes on there and i'm making notes oh yeah this no that that you <laughs> sent me that uh, scripture references where she doesn't have scripture references maybe and it really is amazing uh the the the, the yeah, I'm kind of a lot of lost for words. Just amazing. Yeah, mm. it's, it's all good, brother. We're gonna gonna get the team in the back to uh, look up the God Design by uh, Kelly Marie Kerr, and uh, we'll throw the uh, link into the uh, comments uh, here shortly, guys, so that uh, you can have a look and uh, you know and see what John's talking about because uh, you know this is what we were talking about this morning with uh you know lots of resources are coming our way and this just happens to be another resource that uh john just uh, threw our way so john thank you very much my brother uh before i uh close this out uh can you tell people where they can uh, connect with you and uh you know things like that yeah my facebook page obviously you have already on there i also have a facebook group called holy science astro theology and syncretism uh, all this information that I've gathered pretty much in the last 10, 15 years is on that page. 
-hmm. we try to keep it going and try to keep it esoteric as much as possible. And there's many, many contributors to that that have a lot of wisdom uh, to share. And that's really a good place if you're interested in a more esoteric uh, basis for your, your, your beliefs and your, your mythologies and stuff like that. That's a good place to go. And from there, you can link to many other places. Awesome, John. Thank you very much, my brother. I uh, totally appreciate you uh, sharing your experiences with us and uh, sharing your life experience with us and uh, bringing awareness to uh, to the subject. And uh, I, I greatly, greatly appreciate it. And, and with that being said, on uh, March 22nd, uh, we are uh, featuring a film part as uh, part of this conference called uh, Peace on Both Sides of the Gate by uh, James Bonato. Uh, so, uh, you know, maybe you want to tune in and uh, and watch that with us because uh, mm -hmm. it's a very powerful video. It's about an hour long. And then afterwards, we will have a uh, about a 30, 40 minute uh, panel. So if you want to join in on uh, on that panel, you're more than welcome to do so. I would love to. Thank you for having me on. And uh, I'm getting to the point where I'm feeling more comfortable sharing my story. It's taken me a while to be comfortable in my skin and I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm so happy that you did, brother, and uh, thank you. And uh, I will shoot you a message uh, maybe throughout the day and uh, in the conclusion of this uh, conference. Wonderful. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, my brother. You have yourself a beautiful day. I will. I will enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Bye for now. Okay. Yep. Bye-bye.